All right, welcome back. It is the Vegas Take Sharp and Shapiro. So glad you could join us on a Friday. Trying times for everybody, right? Doesn't matter whether you own a business, you work at a local business, maybe you're in the casino industry. Heck, maybe you're in the entertainment business. I know local entertainers in town. They're not doing shows. They're not making any money. We're all suffering here, some obviously more than others. The number one priority here is your health. The number one priority here is making sure that you and your family are healthy. Yes, there are going to be financial problems, financial issues that you're dealing with. There's no question about that. But, you know, what's, what's your number one concern? The number one concern is the health and well-being of yourself, your family, your loved ones. And that's my concern. And it should be yours as well. We will get over this. We will get through this from a financial perspective. There's no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. We're going to get through this financially. You know, and, and you look at the sports aspect of things because we've talked about this from time to time. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, there's no NBA. There's no NHL. There's no professional so- soccer. They canceled the Masters. I mean, this is, this is unprecedented. The Democratic National Convention has been postponed. And like I said, from a sports perspective, there's literally nothing to watch unless you're into sumo wrestling or table tennis. There's literally, there's the, none of the major professional sports are there. But it's not just that. You know, think of a local colleges. Let's talk UNLV for a few moments here. You know, think of all the athletes that were robbed of their senior year. These are difficult decisions that the university had to make, and they made it early, and they made the right decision. And I want to praise Desiree Reed Francois, who joins us on the line right now, who is the athletic director for UNLV. She's done a good job during this very difficult situation for everybody, and she joins us right now. Desiree, thank you so much for being here. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you doing? And thank you for the kind words. Sure, sure. We're doing okay. We're doing it as best we can. First of all, my first question is how health of you and your family. Is everybody okay? Uh, we are. Thank you very much. Um, my mom's going through some challenges right now, but they're not related to COVID. So Got gotcha. you. Uh, yeah, but thank gotcha. you for asking. Sure, sure. So, you know, Desiree, the last time I was on the UNLV campus was, of course, the Mountain West Conference basketball tournament where, you know, we were watching the UNLV game. And I don't think anybody thought that, you know, it would get as serious as, as it's gotten, you know, globally, nationally and locally. So my question to you is, like, when was the first time that you said to yourself, holy moly, this is going to affect the university and this is going to affect our student athletes? When was the first time that that struck you? Oh, goodness gracious. Um you know, whenever you're going through the times of challenge, uh, it, you just kind of keep going. And so I haven't really had an opportunity to reflect on an exact day or an exact moment. Um, but once we got through the basketball tournament and you saw that spring sports were going to be canceled and not in the uh, NCAA men's basketball, women's basketball tournaments were going to be canceled, um, you started realizing what an impact this was going to have. Um, my first priority, we were really in that triage mode at that point. Um, and so my first priority was figuring out where my students were and making sure they were healthy. Uh, and same with our staff and our coaches. So once we got through that triage mode and, you know, there were, there were changes every hour. So we, uh, whether it was the dorms were people with the dorms were closing, campus was closing, you know, there were challenges that were coming. Um, but it's, it's really, it's a lot like an athletic contest, right? Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, our games don't always go exactly how we want, um, but you have to make pivots and you have to adjust and that's what we're doing. Yeah. And, and again, I want to commend you for that because you acted swiftly and accordingly and, and you could certainly make the case that you saved lives by doing that. So I think everybody should appreciate you and everybody in, in the administration, the athletic department and, and throughout the uh, the university for, for doing the right thing. I have to ask you this, because obviously, as we all know, you said it yourself. The number one priority is the health and well-being of the student athletes and for everybody. But from a perspective, just as a student athlete, like I can't imagine, you know, I'm a 19, 20 year old kid. Uh, maybe I'm a senior and I'm playing my, you know, sport and my senior year is basically robbed from me. And I'm sure all the student athletes are understanding. You have to be. But how difficult, Desiree, you know, do you think it is for some of your student athletes going through what they've had to go through uh, with this whole coronavirus uh, pandemic? You know, it certainly is a challenge, but my student athletes, I am continuously amazed and impressed and 
um, just really heartened by how resilient they are. Uh, yes, when I met with each of the spring sports teams and I met with them individually, and this is before we really got um, deep into the social distancing, but we, and they were still on campus. Uh, and, yeah, there were tears. But I think they also realized this was something bigger than just sports. Um, and just athletic contests. So uh, one of our young, one of our tennis players, um, he's a local Las Vegan, and he was he was talking, and we had this really great conversation the other day. And he said, you know, people always tell you that you should play uh, your games as if it's your last game. Mm-hmm. But candidly, before all this, before my season got canceled, it probably went in one ear and out the other. Now I. I really realize that's true. You just have no idea when it's all going to come to an end. You know, I think what you said is – I'm sorry. Go ahead, Desiree. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I got a little long-winded. No, no, that's that's quite all right. I think what you said is so true, Not just, and I'm sure you'll agree with this, not just with sport. But I was talking to a friend yesterday. I said, you know what, we're going to appreciate going to the restaurant with maybe going on a date or going with your girlfriend or wife or husband, just being able to go to dinner, right, being able to sit down at a restaurant. Standing in a line next to somebody. I mean, so (laughs) you're right. You're right. It's crazy, right, Desiree? I mean, we take advantage. I think we all do. We're all guilty of taking advantage of of, uh, we're blessed with the things that we're able to do, whether it's going to a, a UNLV game whether it's going to a restaurant, going to a casino, right? And I think what you said is, is so evident that these student-athletes, and I think all of us, are going to a- appreciate things more now than ever when this thing is hopefully gone sooner than later, right? Well, and it's such an interesting paradox, right? Um, in times of crises, or at, like remember after October 1, we all want to be together. Like There's something, there's this safety and this sense of belonging that gives you comfort and gives you peace. With this COVID pandemic, we were forced to be physically apart. And so what we've found is that we have to be intentionally caring and intentionally communicative uh, in different ways because we really need that sense of belonging right now more than ever. No, 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 there's absolutely no question. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with UNLV Athletic Director Desiree Reed Francois. So on, on, a, on a side note, I have to ask you this. Uh, I'm sure you probably, even though it's probably not your concern right now, but uh, the rumors of the NBA and the commissioner talking about that, the, you know, the possibility of maybe some NBA games on your properties, uh, possibly the Thomas and Mack Center. So my question to you is, has anybody from the NBA reached out to you? And is there anything you could share with us about that? Uh, no one has from the NBA has directly reached out to me, Desiree Reed Francois, but we have expressed um, that our, you know, we have the NBA, we have the NBA. I was about to say NCAA. I'm <laughs> yep. uh, sorry. Um, we have the NBA Summer League uh, scheduled, and so, you know, it, it certainly would be um, a very, if, as long as it's safe, we would welcome people with an, with open arms. And that would be unbelievable. So it, you mentioned the NBA Summer League. As of now, is that still on schedule to happen in 2020? It's still just a um, – everything is to be determined, right? If you think about it, like we were talking about the Mountain West Conver- Mountain West men's basketball and women's basketball tournament at the start of this conversation, and that was, what, three weeks ago? And right, it wasn't right. that long right. ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Uh, if I, I, if I, I told – if I told you a month ago, Desiree, that we wouldn't have an NCAA tournament, I mean, what would you have said? It's unbelievable. So if you think about how rapidly things have changed, um, it, while we've engaged in a lot of futurist exercises uh, as a department, as coaching staff, um, you know, there's just there's so many variables. So, yeah. And we just don't know. There's no playbook. Um, well, there, there is somewhat, but there's no real AD playbook on how to manage a pandemic. You just think about your core values and your mission, um, and you try and operate with a little more caring and a lot more humanity. So I wanted to ask you, on the, on the positive side of things, I want to talk about, uh, for example, Bryce Hamilton on, on the basketball court. Bryce Hamilton, in my opinion, was probably was probably the most improved player in all of college basketball, the win the UNLV had in, in San Diego State, you know, to you know at San Diego State to take them from the undefeated ranks 
And then how, how do you think that T.J. Otzelberger did this year in his first year as a coach? Because I was, I was really impressed with how well, how well his, his, his kids responded when he sat, you know, when, when he sat the players for, for not playing hard in, in late December. I thought, I thought that his, his players really respected him, and I was impressed with how well they played defensively towards the end of the year. As was I. Um, you could see the growth, uh, and I was really impressed. T.J. has a plan. He's prepared. He cares about my young men, not just as as numbers, but as people. He wants to see them grow, uh, but he has a plan, and you can see the progress. You can feel it. You can feel it in the culture. Um, you can feel it in uh, their development uh, on the court, how they represent themselves in the community. Even their, I get it. It's not sexy, but you know what? It matters to me. Their academic progress. They had a three point four team GPA. That is the best in the history of UNLV men's basketball. That's pretty yeah. impressive. No, so, no, no question. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I'm impressed. Uh, I'm impressed with the in the future for UNLV running Rebel basketball is very bright. Yeah. So uh, speaking of uh, Rebel basketball, uh, even though during this corona coronavirus pandemic, you've still been working, obviously, and you hired a new uh, women's basketball coach. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Yes. Uh, we have the good fortune of welcoming back one of Las Vegas is down uh, in Lindy LaRock. And I had I had heard about Lindy for a number of years. Lindy's sister, Allie, and I worked together at Virginia Tech about a decade ago, or uh, goodness gracious, about eight, eight, nine years ago. Um, And so she told me about her sister, uh, who was then the assistant coach at Belmont. And and so I thought, that's nice. And so then I I looked at her sister because I really, I held Allie in high regard. And then when I moved to Las Vegas, I met, I met her, her mom and dad at uh, at one of our Lady Rebel games, and um, but as I was as we were developing our candidate profile and going through our process, it, you know, I, I kept coming back to Lindy, and she got this job because she's prepared. She is a rising star. She has the character and the competence um, and the energy to be really, really special. So the fact that she's a Las Vegas uh, local and native and really has a wonderful um, sense of compassion and caring for the community, it was a bonus. But she got it because she's really a, a special coach. That's awesome. So really looking forward to uh, being able to meet her and to watch some of those uh, Lady Rebel basketball games. I have to ask you one more basketball question. You know, it's amazing, right, that we are upon the 30-year anniversary of that 1990 UNLV basketball team. I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Isn't that incredible? 30 years have passed since that. We're friends with uh, Anderson Hunt, and, uh, you know, I've met Larry Johnson on a number of occasions, but isn't that incredible? 30 years, and, uh, you know, people still talk about it like they are. Oh, absolutely. I remember watching those games and the cool factor, and goodness gracious, it was just so much fun to watch. And, uh, you know, I had, we just hosted, um, we just hosted Danny Tarkanian had a, came out with a book and we had him do a book signing at, uh, or he had some space um, to sign books and sell books at one of our bas- last basketball games. Uh, and so I picked up one of the books and during this time, it's on my book list to read, but it has been, um, it, it's just such a special, there's not very many schools that have a national championship. And we're very fortunate to do that. And I'm looking yeah. forward to starting to play. You know, these are the first sports-related questions I've had in a really long time. <laughs> and, I, man, I can't tell you how much fun it is to, is to talk about sports again. So thank you. You're welcome. And by the way, you my- mentioned – you mentioned Danny Tarkane, and I just wanted to say yeah. uh, that book signing, we had him on that day uh, to promote that. Yeah. Danny is a great guy. Uh, we get into politics. We get into basketball. I love his basketball stories with, with of course, uh, the legend is the, the late, great uh, Jerry Tarkane. And Danny's a great guy. I love to see former Rebels being involved with not just the basketball program, but I've commended you for reaching out to Randall Cunningham with the football program. We've had Randall on the show as well, and I think it's, it's good work you're doing because I'm not so sure the last 20 years – They've done enough. When I say they, I'm not naming names, but some people have not done enough to reach out. And I, and I think that's so important that you've done that, that TJ's doing that, and uh, the football program is doing that. So I certainly want to commend you on that because I think that is so important to UNLV. 
Well, it's part of our history and it's part of our tradition. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure there's always more that we can be doing. Uh, but there's there's some really great people and really special people in our community. And when I say community, not just in Las Vegas, but our global rebel community. You know, that 1990 team was, I mean, it was really unbelievable. They they, they basically destroyed every team they played. You know, t- t- I mean, uh, it was, they, they were great defensively. They, they, they ran down the court. They had great athletes. A lot of those guys went pro. Will you and LV be doing anything to honor that team in the near future, Desiree? You know, we had a few things planned, and um, but unfortunately, you know, we it, a, a global pandemic tends to get in the way of things. Uh, so we did recognize um Socially, but and I know we've done things um, throughout the years, and you all could probably speak an awful lot more about that sure. because you were here yep. um, for the 25 year and the 20 year, and I, I believe there was a 10 year recognition as well. Like, yeah, yeah, there was. No, you're you're absolutely right, and uh, you sure. know we always will talk about that wonderful. 1990 championship team there's no question so Desiree before I let you go you know you're a sports junkie just like I am right so I'll tell you what I've been doing Desiree to get by I've been watching a little bit of live sumo wrestling okay (laughs) I've done that uh they have live feeds I know it's crazy live feeds of sumo wrestling I've been watching table tennis on tv they have had some live feeds of some professional table tennis matches that's what I'm doing to get by Desiree that's all I have right now I don't know what else to do well, you know, I have been watching some things on YouTube. I must admit, when I can't sleep late at night, um, I do need a fix. And so I have been watching some legendary games and some legendary clips. and I, uh, it, it, That's been kind of fun. Um, and I think we've been hosting a couple on Fridays. And I think we have a football game that we're hosting today that uh, there's going to be some wonderful comments. Um, some of our – I don't know if you saw last week's game. We're yeah, I know you guys are putting up some Kevin games up there. Yeah, yeah. And Ali yep. and Lindy, um, that was a pretty. That was fun to watch. That's um, cool. So, in terms of how I'm getting my sports fix, right now, uh, yes, I'm very similar to you, and I'm looking at old YouTube games. Um, and but I'm also creating. I'm also working on uh, getting to know our student athletes and their stories even more. Um, they have some amazing stories, and and I know um, I know that people are going to enjoy. We're going to put out a couple of new features on student athlete stories, because like I said, they're so much more than just a number, and they're oh, no more question. than statistics. They're no question. special, yep. resilient young people, um, sure. and it's our privilege to be able to help them achieve their hopes and dreams. No question. Well, quickly, last question for you. You're spe- if you're speaking hey, right now, you, you said know. That the last question was the last one. Uh oh, I did do that. Could I squeeze in one more? Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank. And by the way, thank you so much for joining us during such difficult times. We really do appreciate it. I just want you to speak no to the UNLV ticket holders, to the UNLV fans out there, not even just in Las Vegas, but throughout the country, and to your student athletes, to people that are worried, to people that are scared, people that don't even know if there's going to be a UNLV football season. You know, and we all don't know the answer to that but can you just speak to them right now as the athletic director as the leader of UNLV athletics what would you say to everybody right now I'd say that you know what we're going to keep going I know that there are times of challenge Um, I know that things are hard right now but our our student athletes are really special they are working very hard to stay prepared our coaches are doing the same and we're going to be back we're going to be back stronger and hang with us. Uh, we're going to work really hard to make you all proud. So know that we care and know that we're all in this together. We love Las Vegas and this is a special city uh, and this is a special community. So we're very thankful to be a part of it. Very well said, Desiree. And again, thank you. You, you and your staff have done such a wonderful job during these very trying times. And I, I, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for taking some time to join us. Thoughts and prayers to your mother, and, uh, you know, stay safe for you and your family. Thank you so much. Hey, same to you all, and I hope that your families um, are doing well, too. They're hanging in there. Thank you, Desiree. Yeah, thanks a lot, Desiree. Appreciate your time. Thank you all. Uh, appreciate it. That's Desiree Reed-Francois, the athletic director at UNLV.